Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so our jihadist agronomist is making us water a few fields one more time. So uh, no, we're gonna, that's what I'm gonna do now. The reason I'm doing it now is because next week I'm gonna be gone most of the week and he said we could wait this weekend to see if it rains. But the reason why we're doing it is because um, the bottoms, we, we farm in the hills and so the bottoms are fine. It's just those hillsides might need a little bit more water to finish out. And so uh, what he was basically saying, you know, if you kind of cut them short, you could, your ears will just kind of drop and it'll start kind of feeding that ear and it won't mature as well, basically. And uh, it could cut back on your test weight, basically, which you basically get paid on weight um, from your corn. So, uh, and so that's why I'm gonna run a few of these pivots that have longer seasons on them around maybe one more time, maybe just to put 50, hundreds on them or so so that's what I'm heading out here to do now and uh, start it up Forgot how we do this. We got to put some uh, drip oil in here. Get it started dripping. Uh, make sure the well's going to be lubricated, and that's pretty much it. Then we'll set the percent timer and all that, and get this pivot started. And make a circle and. Uh, of the things I'm gonna do now um, for those of you who haven't seen videos past it's actually been a little while since uh gotta get this squared up here uh, we run pivot monitors on pretty much all of our most of our pivots not all of them have it but um, so what I'm gonna do in in the app here is basically come through I was at the center point but this is kind of a spotty area for cell service so I usually wait till I get top of the hill. Come into the app here um, and what I wanted to do like I said I kind of wanted to put on 50 hundreds and so I'm going to come down here um, basically scroll down to the speed and you can see here there's a percent timer rate or revolution you can kind of change any of those parameters you want but I want to kind of go off of uh, oh I just kind of want to go off of rate and this will put on approximately 50 hundreds it's never exact but it's usually pretty close so um so that means that's going to set that percent timer and it's going to take roughly 32 and a half hours for that thing to make a revolution so i'm going to come down here hit send and it's going to send that command to this pivot and uh it basically uh, tells it at the end of the pivot there where the brain is of this accents monitor how to uh set that pivot these are kind of the other functions you can set your uh, where you want it to stop at at a degree angle um, this is just kind of your uh, reading where it's setting at and not whatnot looks like there's kind of a glitch with the map but uh, it could be because of service I'm not sure this is an n-gun this uh, one actually runs the n-gun on this uh, device and so you can actually set that up on the device there too so nope that's how that works basically if you haven't seen my last videos um, that's kind of what we do. It's it's really helpful, especially when you're first gating and setting all that stuff. And you know, basically, we when we irrigate, um, I'll just check them once. Um, basically, that's just for the lubrication, the dripper. And then uh, you know, then you can monitor it on your phone, or it'll send you a text message if it shuts off throughout the day. That way, you can 
not have to it used to be I'd go out there and check them twice or even three times a day just depending on the pivot but uh, especially if you have one that's giving you troubles it's a real nice feature because it just tells you when it's going off and you don't have to worry about going out there and wondering if it's on so um, we utilize that technology quite a bit on our farm anyway so starch line is coming down this one's probably a quarter maybe a little more too yeah it's coming down anyway not a bad looking here see the milk line on that one too so when it starts dropping that means begin getting closer we want that milk line to drop all the way down to here then that's full maturity basically it'll get to a spot here where this will actually turn brown or black and they'll call that black layering that's basically the end of the corn's lifestyle a life cycle so yeah basically what i'm doing now these aren't pivots i necessarily have to run but basically to get them prepared for harvest this guy needs to kind of move over this direction over this way so when we harvest it the pivots basically in a position where we barely have to move it so we can go around it because if we do it in the position it's at now it would really have to it really chop into a, the way we'd have to pick these beans and stuff and so basically what you have to do with these is line them kind of up at a slight angle with the row that way you can harvest one side of it and then just move it forward a little bit or reverse and then harvest the other side of it without having to wait too long because these aren't fast moving uh this isn't fast moving equipment it just barely moves slow so you just kind of want to have it positioned right so you're not uh, basically waiting a long time for it so uh i don't have to run water but i just do might as well while you're moving it anyway because you're burning the fuel anyway so i don't know if you can tell this right here but this must be a different variety of bean right here if i could go back and actually look at my maps and see exactly but this one's taller and shorter but um also earlier this year these beans got hailed pretty pretty decently but luckily it was early enough that it um it basically held up it just kind of shortened them up basically because these i'm six foot they're basically kind of at my hip socket um, but they can still put out a decent amount of pods um, it'll be interesting to see how well they actually do yield but um, as you can see the ground still actually got moisture I got a question from a guy in France I'm, I don't know if I can pronounce his name it's either Stéphane or Stefani or I don't know how you say it but um, anyway he was asking what we do about um, our rotation crop rotations and uh, cover crops basically and um, basically uh, a typical rotation for us is soybeans on every third or fourth year out here, um, for us anyway on our farm. Um, we do no-till our soybeans and we strip-till our corn ground, which basically means we try to disturb the soil as little as we can. If we wanted to not disturb the soil at all, we'd be pure no-till, but in our climate, um, we just feel, and the way our practices are, that strip-till suits our farm uh fairly well um a lot of guys can no-till around here and they do it successfully the it's just you got to kind of um you, your tolerance has got to be a lot tighter you know when you plant you, you got to have a you kind of have a narrower window and um just setting stuff you know you just got to be right on top of it so no-till can be done it's just um it's a little harder to do um so with our practice we just come out and we like to put a some fertilizer on with our strip till and whatnot but um as far as cover crops um the only time we actually use cover crops on our farm is if like dad or somebody will chop silage for uh, cows or something and there's no cover on so a lot of times they'll go out there and plant like a rye or something just so the cattle and that ground will have something to kind of hold it um, as far as using cover crops um across broad acres it's just um the reason why we don't as of now is it's a lot of work and it's during your harvest time when you're using all your help and so uh you know just to be able to shake equipment free and help free during that time it's really hard to do because it's all a timing thing as well um, we don't have a lot of time after we're done harvest actually when we're harvesting 
by the time we're done we've usually had the first frost and all that stuff anyway and the ground's getting pretty close to froze but um no so we don't do a lot of cover crops um but as you can see here there is a nice mat that the residue leaves on the ground um and that's you know it's already breaking down and we attribute a lot of that to um the stock rolls that we've put on our corn heads as well that helps break down that last year's residue and it kind of spread you want to make sure you spread it out evenly and uh, when you do that it kind of creates a nice mat and you can kind of see it just kind of i don't know just breaking down basically you can see some white mold or i don't know if you call it mold but it's basically turning into soil and so it's utilizing that uh, residue from the old crop and stuff and so that's basically uh how we use that also it you know creates a nice mat to kind of hold water when uh your plants aren't uh tall enough you know to basically shade that row so it helps in that regard um it also has its everything has its challenges it's got its all pros and cons versus full tillage and stuff so um but no basically in our operation that's what we do is strip till the corn and no till the beans farting cows so right now i'm attempting to uh, swap out a starter on a 2011 or 2012 Gator. I'm not sure why it went out. My brother bought it used um, a few, well, it's probably been five or how many years ago, but uh, they said a little old lady just drove it to church on Sunday. It seemed like a believable story, but apparently she must have went over a few terraces in her day too. So it's right down in that area. Easy peasy. Pro tip, disconnect the battery, sparks, let you fill in the blanks. You do gotta pull this piece out from underneath there to uh, basically get room to squeeze your little hands in there to get the cables off of the starter. Just a word of caution, I'm not the smartest egg to fall from a tree. I got the old starter out here. Looks like that went out kind of on that end. You can see there's no bushing in there like there is on the new one. Hopefully this one works better. So to pop it out, there's two bolts. One there and then one kind of behind that belt area that hold it into place. Basically you gotta remove the shield to get to those. Slide you over so I can get in here. There we go. Everybody ready? Those are spikes. Hey Garrett. Oh, there you All go. All right, we got her now. Say bye, Dad. Bye. Bye, bye guys. Mom. Her up. Usually have enough people, one drives to pick up, but you can see he's irresponsible. Up. It was a lot cooler it seemed like today, but apparently parent laying out pipe makes it feel a lot warmer. Hey guys, so thanks for hanging with me this uh, video and uh, next week I encourage you to go out to, if you're in Nebraska, go out to Husker Harvest Days. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be out there because, uh, well, we got, I got a sister-in-law that's about to have a baby and also next week I think uh, we're going to go on a little family vacation so don't expect out of, much out of me next week. So um, yeah, like, subscribe, thank you.